We are live here at the 2016 Food Tank Summit in Chicago. I'm Alia Dalal, guest host of Chicago's Best on WGN, um, as well as a local chef. Um, I'm here interviewing Bruce Friedrich from the Good Food Institute. That sounds like such a nice place, the Good Food Institute. Um, so Bruce, I'd love to have you just maybe in a couple of sentences give me a rundown of what you do at the Good Food Institute. Yeah, absolutely, Alia. Thank you very much. Uh, the Good Food Institute is a nonprofit organization, 501 C3, and we're using markets and food technology to transform agriculture away from the use of animals and toward healthier, more sustainable, less environmentally problematic, and more humane alternatives. So we're focused on a variety of activities, uh, all of which are focused on promoting plant-based alternatives to animal agriculture, uh, as well as cellular alternatives to animal agriculture. So is there um, like a specific example of, you mentioned technology, um, that that is being used to help with that change? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the ones that we're most excited about are the clean meat technologies and the plant-based meat technologies. So you look at something like Beyond Meat or the Impossible Burger, uh, basically these companies are replicating, they're saying, okay, meat is made up of component parts and we can do that with plants. And they're doing it, and they're fooling meat eaters. And so the sort of brainstorm of the, the Good Food Institute is that pretty much everybody makes their food choices on the basis of price, taste, and convenience. So, I mean, I, I think the food tank has uh, sort of a more thoughtful audience, but 96% of Americans eat fast food. More than half of Americans eat fast food on a monthly basis. So if you go out into the streets and you ask people, why did you buy that? It's going to be taste for 100% of people, you, me, everybody here. It's going to be price, um, and it's going to be convenience. If it's not there, people aren't going to eat it. So our goal is to create products that compete on the basis of those three factors. That's what we're focused on. Interesting. Um, so, and I, I'm really glad to hear that you brought up price because I feel like that's something that um, is is often left out of the conversation, or is really only brought up when we're talking about, um, you know, maybe low income or global hunger issues. But even like you mentioned, even for everyone here today, price is something that I'm sure all of us really consider when it comes to food. Um, but I want to also ask about um, you're mentioning plant based meats. Um, I'm a chef. And and one of the things I love to do is really help people work with um, work with vegetarian foods or work with um, smaller amounts of meat. It's something a lot of people come to me asking about. I think we're seeing That's a shift right. in our culture that people want you know less but higher quality of meat. Um, and I'm curious about uh, the sort of going for plant-based foods versus um, plant-based, more meat substitute foods. I think that's kind of a divisive topic too. So I'm curious what, what your take is on these um, like meat substitutes, we'll call them. Yeah, I mean, I, so meat consumption is actually going up, which I think is shocking to an awful lot of people. Because um, on the one hand, you certainly have more and more people eating meat substitutes, more and more people at least saying that they're eating less meat. <laughs> But even per capita, meat consumption is going up. And it seems to be largely a function of price. So we looked at what happened with plant-based milk. And plant-based milk is about 9% of the milk market. It's over $2 billion on a $24.5 billion milk market. Plant-based meat, proportionately, is about 1 40th that size. Mm. And what plant-based milk did was they made their products convenient, they made them delicious, and they made them reasonably priced. So you look at what Beyond Meat and Tofurky and Gardein and Impossible, you look at what these companies are doing, and they're saying people eat meat not because of it's how it's produced. Like nobody wants to eat something that's less sustainable than something else. Nobody wants to eat something that causes all of that climate change or that harms animals or that uses antibiotics or whatever else. Um, but they're eating it because they like it. So if we can replicate that with plants, or we can replic replicate that with cellular agriculture, um, people will switch over, just like more and more people are switching over to plant-based milk. Interesting. And so you were speaking on a panel about transparency in the food system and some of the topics um, that were coming. We had some, some sort of big, uh, wide-ranging global policy issues coming up, also um, talking about the nitty-gritty of food labels. And I'm curious how um, transparency plays into um, an organization like yours. Yeah, I mean, we see transparency from two vantages. 
So the first is we're competing with these products that could not be more opaque, right? Nobody, I mean, animal products, it's now illegal in many states to even find out what's happening on these farms, what's happening in these slaughterhouses. They're literally passing laws. Um, probably violate the First Amendment. So far, you know, one of them has been overturned, and there are challenges to at least two more of them. But the meat industry is so afraid of people finding out what conventional animal agriculture looks like. And these are the only laws that criminalize undercover investigations, and they're focused on making the meat industry as non-transparent as possible. I mean, similarly, you think about the environmental consequences. The most efficient meat is chicken, and yet it takes nine calories into a chicken to get one calorie back out. So everybody at this conference is very concerned about food waste, and we should be. About 40% of everything that is produced is thrown away. And yet chicken, the most efficient meat, you're throwing away eight calories for every calorie that you consume. It's essentially 800% waste. But it, it's not something that's on the label. It's not something that people are thinking about. It's an opaque system. Same thing with climate change. Same thing with antibiotic use. Same thing with the way that animals suffer on modern farms and in modern slaughterhouses. So there's a lot that's not transparent that when people find out about it, they don't like it. Um, so that's one way that we think about it. And then we think about it from the affirmative um, vantage as well. So the plant-based products, the cellular agriculture products, which we're calling clean meat because it has no bacteria and it's so much more environmentally efficient, so sort of a nod to clean energy. Um, we want to make sure that the companies that are creating the transformation um, that they are transparent, that customers understand uh, what it is that's going into their production, what's in the products, how the products are produced. So both you know, trying to make the current conventional products more transparent and trying and to ensure the that the replacements are also transparent. Interesting. Um, if you're just joining us now, I'm speaking to Bruce Friedrich from the Good Food Institute um, here behind the scenes at the Food Tank Summit in Chicago. Uh, maybe one final question for you, Bruce. I'm curious, have you had the opportunity to sit in on some of the other panels and speakers today? Um, is there anything that you found either uh, really inspiring or thought-provoking, maybe something you're going to sit and think about a little bit later, any sort of tidbit that you'd like to share with the rest of us? I really, I mean, I have found the optimism that people are bringing to this discussion, um, the excitement that people have at the degree to which more and more people do care how their food is made. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting that the CEO of Cargill was here and was talking about Cargill's commitment to transparency. I mean, it, you know, it remains to be seen, but the fact that he was here having the dialogue I thought was really deeply encouraging. But mostly I'm just, I'm, an ex I'm excited about Food Tank. I'm excited about all of these people coming together to talk about where our food comes from and how we can make our food system better. Yeah, awesome. And I'm super excited about the reception tonight at Italy. So we'll be uh, continuing the conversation there. Um, and also Food Tank has three more summits coming up um, in 2017. Um, so be sure to check out foodtank.com to learn more about today's summit, um, as well as what's in store in the future. So thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Alia.